Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to do something a little bit different here today. So um, I've been meaning to talk about this both on the blog and um, on this channel for some time now. Haven't really figured out the best time to do this, but I think I'll go through one of these here today and sort of show you the kind of stuff that I find. So as I've talked about before, when I was a kid, um, my dad was a big uh, player of APA, and we had a bunch of old issues of the APA journal sort of sitting around the house. It's not much fun to hold on to that stuff, right? I mean, the paper goes yellow over time, and it's really hard to store. I've uh, given away my entire collection. I used to have a really large one, too, going back to uh, actually the late 60s. I had a couple issues from back in 68. Um, but uh, that's all long gone and uh, over there with collectors somewhere or other. But the reason why I can do this is because you have the digital world of the Appa Journal. Now, instead of doing like an actual review of the Appa Journal, I want to kind of show you the sort of stuff that was in this. There were other um, sports, uh, like tabletop sports, especially focused newsletters, and uh, I guess you can call them sort of magazines. They're more like fanzines that were out back in uh, the, uh, I mean, back, I think as far back as the 50s in some cases, um, so back quite some time. But the APA Journal was special, especially during a very, very certain uh, portion of the APA Journal's history. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about what we're talking about here in a sample issue. I would normally take you through the history of this, but I haven't really finished sort of writing things up and kind of doing research into this and looking and seeing what I can find out about it. Because we're not quite that far yet into the story of the history of APA. We're still messing around with national pastime. This particular one's from June 1990. Um, you can see, of course, all these letters to the editor. I mean, the thing's huge, right? It's a 28-page uh, magazine, which is larger than, I think, the Stratomatic Review was at the time, and it contained a huge amount of information, including quite a bit of information that might be interesting to you, even if you're not playing these games. For example, this from Don Zminda, who you can find on Twitter today. I talked with him not long ago. He was involved with the early days of Stats, the company, um, wrote a whole bunch of uh, highlights of the 1969 season, which was recently re-released. Uh, re and then there's all this stuff about the stats of the season, stuff that I haven't really dug that far into. Different APA pitching game innovations, basic game rather innovations and things like this. Some of this stuff kind of has survived in other contexts. Some of it has not. We can look at all that a little bit later. There's a lot of stuff here about the old APA DOS um, baseball game, which is something that we will look at later, but the time for that has not yet arrived. It might take us a couple of years to really dig into this because of the other projects I want to do, but trust me, we are going to get it. Then you get stuff like this. So here's statistics for the carded APA um, football players, the NFL players for the 89 season. Um, I'm not going to get into this too much other than to say that if you're interested in that, you really need to go through these archives. There's a lot of good stuff. And then here is the interesting part. So the old app alone uh, section is the one that was so fascinating for me. And this one includes um, a, a little uh, piece here on the uh, summer of 1949 and um, how this could be interesting to those who are interested in replays. And um, there are little things here, including, uh, you know, talks talk about um, the old uh, uh, Dave Halberstam book, The um, uh, Summer of 49, which I actually haven't read yet. Um, and a bunch of stuff like that, looking at why this um, season is one really to fall in love with. Um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, sort of interesting stuff that goes on here, you know, um, uh, including talks about, you know, the interesting performances there. We all know about the Boston versus New York um, in the American League, uh, the uh, difficult or now it's a little bit difficult to replay it, as you've been seeing here in my replay, because um, Boston though they can uh, hit, um, have some has some problems with pitching, right? And in the National League, as we've seen, we kind of haven't had the uh, random number generator work for the Dodgers for us so far, but we've seen a lot of other interesting things happen, right? Ralph Kiner had, as we forget, seven straight home run titles and hit 54 in 1949, taking advantage of the Greenberg Gardens. Uh, Mel Parnell had a really good season. Joe Page, of course, had the 27 saves. Of course, we didn't know about that till uh, the Big Mac came around in 1969. And uh, Bob Feller did pitch, but they won't tell you this here. He was injured for a while. But what I'm saying is that, you know, even if you don't play APA, if you're not interested in it, a lot of these articles and a lot of um, the uh, reviews that are here in the, this APA journal might be of some interest to you. This is one of the reasons why I want to sort of feature it. There are different reports on replays and stuff like that, and um, it's interesting to read some of them in retrospect. Some of them are good. Some of them are a little bit meh. Again, we're going to go through a lot of these, I think, one by one and look at what we like and what we don't like. Um, when I just look at this, just glancing at this right here, say this 1965 replay, I do like looking at how each team did, but uh, reading through this is a little bit cumbersome. There might be a better way to sort of present this type of material so that it's a little bit more readable and a little bit more understandable and maybe a little bit less work for those who are doing all the writing. 
Uh, when I was a kid, I used to look at these replays and would just stare at the final standings all day long because the truth is when it comes to a replay, right, you know, like you don't want to actually do the work of the replay, right? You just want to see the results and think, oh, man, this happened instead of that. Isn't that interesting, right? This may be one of the reasons why you see a lot of people uh, do a lot of autoplay projects um, and not really think about what they're doing and think about some of the problems with the uh, game engines that they're using. But, uh, you know, I will tell you, having grown up a little bit, that um, the uh, process of playing the replay in some cases is actually a little bit more fun than just getting a bunch of final statistics and looking and seeing what the standings were. Anyway, just wanted to have you take a real quick look at that and a real quick idea of sort of what can be done. There's a lot of um, different stuff that we can do here. I'll, I'll go back to the screen here for a second. Um, here we go. So, for example, um, when we're looking here at uh, the uh, uh, final uh, statistics in the 65 season replay, right? I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of the stuff that would be really interesting for us. Like, did we look at the domination index score? Did we take a closer look to see, like, you know, do we have too many innings pitched or too few? Were there too many outs or too little? Why is the ERA off a little bit here? Can we figure out why? Stuff like that. We'll get into that as we start getting the final touches on some of these seasons. Anyway, a little bit of a preview. I'll talk with you guys tomorrow. Bye.